Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing today? My name is Lawrence Slatty, also known as Mr. International. Uh, welcome to uh, Financial Independence through small multifamily investing. Tonight, we have a very special guest, Yona Weiss. Yeah, I'm smiling. Yona is the boss of LinkedIn. Um, I'm here in the Bronx, New York. I have six units here in the Bronx, but I'm also looking in areas, other areas. I'm looking in um, the Piedmont Triad area, also looking in Huntsville, Alabama, and Norfolk, Virginia. Also, of course, looking in the Bronx, looking at JV, looking for partners, looking for people interested in having fun and making money. So we're going to, without further ado, I'm going to bring on Yona, the boss Weiss, the LinkedIn, the LinkedIn master, right? And the and, and I call him a super connector, right? Yona is a go-giver in all aspects of the world. He's a true go-giver, right? And I want to thank you all for taking time from your family, from your sleep, right? To come on here and discuss and help us to become and show us how to be a super connector. Yona Weiss, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Great to be here. Pleasure to be here. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know what to, where to go after that introduction, but uh, just sh share with you guys a little bit today. My, my goal is to share with you a little bit about how I use the platform LinkedIn and how over the past four or five years, it's totally you know, blown up my, not only entire business, but networking and opened up opportunities way beyond my imagination. Um, you know, I view it as like a networking event. And you know, similarly, we're coming on here, you go in the, you know, every week, Kind of these meetups, these Zoom meetups. You're meeting people. You're you're talking to people. You know, <clears throat> and I have I a meetup also Wednesday. With Lawrence is a very regular attendee of, uh, and yes. it's really more than anything just to get to know people. You get to know people. You you start to you know do business. Obviously, you have an opportunity. Right, Ray saying he's looking for properties in Arizona. Right, uh, Margaret saying looking for in Minnesota. You know, once you learn that, okay, so your your radars go up and. You know, if you hear something else, that's what Lawrence is talking about, a super connector. A connector is not necessarily someone that's going out of their way to try to, oh, let me connect people, but it's just listening, right? And listening, getting to know people and, and listening to hear what they're doing. And, you know, when you do that enough, you know, maybe some people are better at it naturally than others. But for me, it's natural when I hear someone else is investing in, uh, you know, in Arizona or in Minnesota, I'm like, oh, you know, maybe you should, you should connect with Margaret. Like, here's a great uh, person you should speak. You guys are doing the same thing and maybe some synergy there. One story that really and illustrates this, I had a couple of guys on my podcast. Uh, I have a podcast called Weiss Advice. It's a lot of fun to interview great people. And there were two partners that were interviewed together. And I asked them, you know, how did you guys meet? And they're both in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, middle place where I'm not too familiar with, but one of them, one of them was a, a you know real estate attorney and he was an investor, and the other one owned a property management company and he was an investor also, and they were buying. He's like they, well, they used to show up to the same properties, like looking at properties to buy, and uh, you know one time I was like, oh, he bought it, he ended up getting the deal, he ended up closing the other one, and and each one was like beating the other one out in offers, and they came together one time like, hey, why don't we just like you know, partner together. Like you're really good at the property management side of things. I'm really good at, uh, you know, negotiating and, you know, other things, asset management. Long story short, they saw they both had uh, strengths uh, that the others didn't have and they combined forces, you know, and now they own like over 2000 units together. Um, and so it's just incredible to see when you're, you know, not necessarily trying to you know, compete or, or do better than the next person, but just seeing where the opportunities lie. So that's kind of in a nutshell, like what the connector thing is all about. Just trying to just listen and see how, you know, who people are, what they do. And then uh, when a connection comes along, try to try to make that connection. It's something I try to do every day. Also, just try to make at least one introduction between uh, between people say, hey, I think you're been, you know, you could benefit. I know you're doing this, et cetera. And uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. So LinkedIn, going back to LinkedIn, because that's really the subject at hand here. And I do want to share some very important stuff with you guys here, what I think everyone can benefit from. Uh, and basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to cover a few topics. Okay. What is, why LinkedIn I see is the most important 
social network, especially if you're a business, but something that everyone who is in business, especially if you're in sales or you're looking for investors or business development or anything, you're a real estate investor looking for deals, looking for investors, looking for um, brokers, et cetera. There's a lot of opportunity to be found there that people aren't tapping into. And especially in the commercial real estate industry, uh, it's one of the most under utilized uh, platforms in the industry. And I'm, you know, I've been spending a few years trying to, uh, trying to show people at least just what I'm doing and encourage people to, you know, try it out on their own and see, see what you're going to get out of it. So I hope uh, a few things I do want to talk about today, and I'm going to share what I'm going to do is just going to share my screen and share my LinkedIn. So you can kind of walk with me on a journey of how I might spend time on, on the platform and you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about as we're going through this. But before I do that, I just wanna talk about a few things. Number one, the most important thing I think about LinkedIn is to make sure that you have a profile that looks professional, okay? And it may sound like, oh, what does that mean? I actually have a free resource on my website if anyone wants to go check out yodelweiss.com. I have a free resource you can download uh, that will give you and I'm not taking your email to like send you blasts. I don't send out any emails whatsoever. So, but what that will show you is just basically 10 steps on how to make your profile look professional. And why is that so important? Because today the digital world and especially LinkedIn is like your, that's your reputation. That's like who you are. If you go ahead and I, I guarantee you, everyone should try this right now. Let's try this. If everyone's on a, on a laptop, looks like you guys open up another tab over there and just do me a favor, right? Type your name into Google, open up a Google, right? Search, type your name into Google. Okay. I am going to do it also. I've done this a bunch, but just, just so we're all on the same page over here. Okay. Now, for those of you who have just put your name into a Google search, um, tell me, right? Who sees LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile, unless you're like an extremely common name, which I don't think any of us on here do. Uh, do you see LinkedIn like at the top of your search results? Mm -hmm. num number one, number two, three, four, five, like where is it? Race is number three in the search result. Okay. Anyone else get a search result from Google? Your name? Lauren says number one. Okay, number one search result for Lawrence Laddie. That's incredible. Uh, anyone else trying this? Number one. Margaret, number one. Okay. Leslie, did you, did you find anything? It's like you're muted there. And yeah, Randy Joe, we need to create one. Okay, so if you don't have, obviously you don't have a LinkedIn profile, you're not going to get a search result from LinkedIn. But the point here that I'm trying to make, and I think everyone, right, a bunch of you, number one search result, some of you, number three, what, what the common denominator here, here is, is that anyone who you are going to try to do business with now in this 2022, in this world, they're going to Google your name. It's just something that everyone is going to do. I mean, you may do it yourself. And if you don't, I, I recommend you, you do it because you can find out a lot about a person. Um, and especially if you're like, oh, who is this person? If you put in an offer on, on an apartment building or something and they don't know anything, you know, they just see your offer that owner may go and Google your name. And if they come up with uh, you know, good results, that may be very good for you. So that's why LinkedIn is so important because when someone Googles your name, your LinkedIn profile is coming to the top, okay? So someone's going to check that. And what are they going to find? That's the question. And if it looks professional, it looks like you are who you say you are. And it, well, first of all, it's, a free, it's free advertising. It's a free website, basically. And you're able to put there whatever you want. You can put links to resources you have. And I'll, again, I'll show you what we're going to do. So again, first thing, you want to make sure that you're optimizing your profile. The second thing that we're going to focus on tonight, and why LinkedIn is so important, is expanding your network, right? It's about meeting new people, finding the right connections, not just accepting every invitation from every single person in the world from Bangladesh and, you know, Serbia. I don't know who, who's sending you connections, but I get, you know, tons of connection requests every day and basically do not accept half of them uh, most of the time. Um, so the second thing is finding the right network. And the third thing I want to talk about is about creating content, okay? Something that a lot of us, if you're not familiar with it, if you're not something that is regularly posting your own original content, it can seem very overwhelming. It can seem like 
I can never do that. I don't know how people come up with the creativity, the con, et cetera. I want to kind of dispel some of those myths and, you know, give everyone the opportunity to try to do this. The, the fourth thing, okay, which is probably the most important is about focusing on engagement. Okay. Engagement means interacting with other people's content, not necessarily just hitting the share button. No, not just hitting the like button and not just, you know, scrolling through your feed, but actually writing uh, content, uh, comments on other people's posts that are thoughtful, right? That, that add value and creating those connections through that. These are, these are really, really amazing things. There's a lot more we can cover. LinkedIn is an ama you know, amazing platform. I've gotten, like I said, a tremendous amount from the platform. Uh, we can cover so much and I definitely want to open the floor to questions and stuff as well. Um, but I'm a little under the weather. I don't know if you guys can tell, probably not because you don't know me, but uh, actually this little sore throat, I had a fever earlier today, but said I could not miss Mr. International's meetup. We planned this a couple months back and uh, you know, I just feel bad to, to cancel last minute. So if I like, you know, for whatever reason, feel like, okay, that's enough. We'll just hold it there. Whatever the case is, if we're not already connected on LinkedIn, please go ahead and send me a connection request and we will uh, continue the conversation there. But let's just jump into it. Uh, I'm just going to share my LinkedIn page and show you what I'm talking about and, and how I do things. Okay. I'm going to go through four, those four things that we talked about, optimizing your profile, expanding your network, creating content, and then focusing on engagement. There's a lot more we can cover, like I said, but these are the, the, the things that I want to focus on the most. Um, so, um, actually, Lawrence, I see if I'm just going on my LinkedIn right now. I see a couple of people messaged me about attending the meetup and they couldn't find the link. So, is there a way? Let me click that invite. Let me just send it over to people here. Give me one second. Oh. That. And this is this is being recorded, right? So we're good in case anyone misses it. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Let me just send this over to someone. Okay, let's share the page. All right, there's the link. Let me share the screen. Okay, let's do it. So we're sharing the screen. Okay, close that off. So let's let's check out. This is LinkedIn here, guys. Now it's very interesting. They put some of this stuff up there from time to time. We're gonna come back to the home feed in a second, okay? And I'll show you some very interesting things about the home feed. First thing I'm gonna do is just go to my profile. Now this is pretty old. I've had this banner up here for like four years. I haven't changed it. I could probably get something that's a little more professional, do something a little more branded or something, but it works. It has my name, my contact information tells me the basic thing about what I do, okay? More cash flow for property owners. It's intriguing, and again, professional picture. This took me about 10 minutes to make on an app called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. It's a free app. Um, incredible thing. I, I don't have any, you know, real digital, uh, uh, what's the word? Creation. Uh, I don't know what the word is. Okay, I'm blanking. Anyways, I'm not very creative when it comes to uh, design, okay? But I did this in about 10 minutes. So one, you need a profile picture. You need a professional looking profile picture. I'm just gonna say it. Um, it doesn't have to be like professional, meaning professionally taken, but it shouldn't be just like, you know, a picture of you at the beach or something like that, right? It should be something that looks professional, okay, simple. Second thing, and again, you can go to my website and download this yourself and, and see these, uh, these things. I'm just gonna run through it quickly. Number two, the banner, pretty simple. It's a picture, don't leave it blank. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, your tagline, okay, this is called the tagline here. And the reason why this is probably the most important piece of real estate, we're talking about real estate here, right? This is the most important real estate of your entire LinkedIn profile right here. This tagline, why is this so important? Because it summarizes what you do and it summarizes to people who don't know you, um, number one, what you do and how you can help them. Okay? And, and it can include a lot, a lot of different things. And I could show you examples of good ones and bad ones. But the reason why this is so important is very simple. Anytime that you comment on someone else's post, 
Uh, and we're going to get to that in the engagement section. But anytime you comment, that tagline is going to show up. Anytime you like or comment, anytime anyone sees you, that tagline is going to show up. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Go to the home feed. I'll just go to uh, you know my activity. And you see over here, activity. Let's say I commented on someone's post over here. Um, here you go. Okay, I commented on this post. And right there, it says my name. And it says my tagline right there. It doesn't say the whole thing. So the first 60 characters are really the ones that you want to focus on. Make sure that that's going to show up the most. Hover over my name. It's not for me, but you hover over someone's name and it will show, pop up, right, what they are. Now, this really doesn't tell me much about Caroline, unfortunately. Uh, and so it's kind of, a, to a certain extent, it's, it's wasted space. So I want to go back there and show you, right, why this is so important. Make sure that it's a good one and make sure that and you can change it up, but it should list, again, the first line, especially what you do and how you can help people, because that's what you want people to find. The other things are important, the about section, make sure you have a call to, call to action over there some, somewhere or another, right? schedule a free conversation. It's going to talk about what you do. It can be anything, but it should be filled. right? When you go, you're going to look at someone's profile. You're going to see, oh, you can add these media things. What does that mean? You can add media. So if I've been on a podcast or I've been on a, a section, what I can do, uh, you know, anything like that, uh, show all media. And if I want to add something, I can add something too. Uh, there's probably ways to do that. It's, these are like old podcasts. So I haven't updated this in a long time. But anyways, the point is, is that you can add media. You can add, like I said, if you've been, you can add it up here in the top as well. If you've being on a podcast, if you have written an article, if you've done anything like that, you can add those things to your profile. So it looks more professional. It looks more like you're a real person should talk about, you know, what you're doing, your experiences. Again, you should write at least one or two sentences, at least again, here I've written a lot, but at least one or two sentences in each section of the different companies you've worked for in terms of your experience. Um, so it's not just blank. The other thing I would say is don't leave this, make sure that you fill out the correct um, name so that you have the logo. You see here on all these, see here on, on all these, and maybe this is, I need to blow this up a little bit. Let's see, make this a little bit bigger. Is that better? Is that better? Mm -hmm. um, it's like people squinting over there. I just blew up the page a little. You see how there's a logo here related to my company, right? There's a logo here related to the company. That's because the company has a company page, okay? And on a company page on LinkedIn, you can, right, say, oh, this is who I am. And therefore it's gonna show up the logo as opposed to if it doesn't have, see this doesn't have a company page, right? So it just shows up as this kind of blank thing. It's just something that makes it more uh, professional looking. It's not something you need to do, but again, if you have a company, make sure you have a company page. It literally takes like five minutes to set up a company page. And the way to do that is, um, you know, you just go over here to the side and you click on the work section over here, I think, and, uh, where is it? Post a job? No, it's over here. Um, okay, I don't remember how to do it, but <laughs> there's there's a way to to create a company page. It used to be over here, I think. Um, advertise instead of post a job. Oh, create a company page. There it is. Okay, so in the work section, just click create a company page, and it's pretty simple. You create a company, right? That's it. You put the name in upload your logo and uh, and that's it put your website and then it looks professional okay that's pretty simple big uh, big tip over there um, the third thing I want to talk about again we can do a lot more about the profile we can go a lot more into that there's a few more sections there but I don't want to get too caught up on the profile you guys can like I said go to my website one thing I would say is don't get overly uh, this skill section over here used to be very popular like 10 years ago on LinkedIn, where when you logged in, it used to say, do you want to endorse, endorse someone for their skills? Don't worry too much about that. However, I would say the recommendations are a huge thing. Here we got my, my brother, Jerome over here, uh, who you guys know, right? Everyone knows Jerome, right? He, I would say this is probably one of the most important sections of the LinkedIn page is the recommendations. Because again, it's giving, if someone is going to Google your name, they're going to go and they see, oh, is this a real person? If you have real um, interactions with people, and you're active on the platform, you're gonna get, receive and give uh, recommendations. I think this is really, really powerful. Don't just give like a one-liner, right? This is great from Jesse, right? Yona is such a amazing being, that's great. Um, 
you know, I don't necessarily like, you know, the one liners. I like when it's much more thought out. So I've given a ton also. So, you know, 23, it's something that you should do. If you have a good experience with someone and you've had a good business experience, go ahead, give them a recommendation. It takes maybe a few minutes, but it's very thoughtful. It's a very kind thing to do and will help them. And you can ask for it also. If you've done business with someone or you've been a colleague or, or you know, work with someone, I think you can get a tremendous amount by just having that, uh, that on your profile. So that's all we're going to talk about the profile now. We're going to go to the home feed because the second thing I want to talk about is uh, actually let's go to the expanding the network first. That's something that hopefully is a lot quicker. <laughs> um, and um, so we'll go to the network. Okay, click the network. You see, oh, Bernadette is on the call here, right? She says, hi, I attend your presentation. So there we go. We're going to accept that. And it's going to show up. We have a little bit of a, a little note there. I'm going to respond to that shortly. Not right now. I'll get back to you, Bernadette. We got David who's also on the call here. Um, and then I want to show you some of these other ones, right? How do you know who should you accept? Who should you not accept? Okay, so for me, I don't want to waste my time on LinkedIn. I want to spend the time that I'm on there focused, and I want to spend the time that I'm on there uh, engaged and, you know, interacting with the people that I actually think, number one, I can potentially do business with. Number two, that we can help each other in some other way through networking in our industry. So someone who's totally out of my industry, number one, I'm not necessarily going to connect with them unless there's a good reason. Okay, and I want to preface that. I'm definitely not connecting with everyone, but I'm also not ignoring everyone. I, I want to expand that network. There just has to be a reason. I want to make sure, number one, they're not a, a bot. They're a real person. Okay. And there are a lot of bots out there. And even if they're not a bot, but they're a real person that uses a bot. Okay. What I mean by uses a bot, there are these programs out there that are literally just sending out hundreds of messages a day to new connections because they want to spam them. Now I use the word spam maybe a little bit loosely, but I think everyone can relate to this. Have you ever gotten a message, uh, from someone, either a new connection or something like that. And they just send you this whole long, you know, cold message about whatever their service is that, you know, finding leads for you or, you know, whatever it is. To me, that's a waste of time. Like, I don't need that. On my, in my inbox, I just delete those. So I do the same thing on LinkedIn too. If someone sends me a message like that, I will just delete that, which is why I'm a little bit more careful who I connect with. Because again, if I don't want, if I connect with them, and then immediately they're going to send me a message. Uh, why do I need that? I don't want to waste my time with that. If it's you know someone who is actually engaged or someone that we can have some sort of uh, connection with, it's a whole different story. So I'll give you a couple of examples. If this is a brand new, right? This DD, I'll go to these one by one. Let's let's check out DC. Is this someone who's on the call here? Because if it is, um, I don't want to. Maybe it is someone who's on the call because that would probably make sense. Anyone DC is on the call here? Yes, this is why I'm here. All right, there you go. Okay, so perfect. So let's give, let's check out DC. It looks like you have zero followers, it means you just created a profile recently, correct? Pretty much, yes. Pretty much, okay, so that's great. So I'm gonna be your first connection. Is that Thank right? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna accept D DC. See, if this was not, if I didn't. All right, sorry, my uh, my my Wi-Fi is a little slow over here for a second. So if the if DDC was not on this connect on this call, like I'd be like, uh, I don't know who this person is. They don't look like they have an updated profile. What do I have to do with them? How do they find me? Uh, I may or may not connect. Okay, that but my as you see, I'm going and checking out the profile before I just hit connect or ignore. That's something I always like to do. Um, it's very easy just to ignore them or, or to overlook if there's a good reason. But if it's someone that I don't know, I'll go in and check out their profile. But you see what I mean here with the profile picture, the banner, this is what it looks like if you don't have something. So DC is learning tonight and hopefully by the next time we come to a profile, it will, be, um, it will be a little bit better. So let's go back to the network and check out another one. So this guy, Shahzad Khan, okay? So you see, he's just sending me a cold message. I hope you're doing well. I provide guest posting service. I can check your site, All right? Backlinks. This seems like, okay, he's a SEO specialist. That's great. I don't need that. He's probably somewhere in, you know, India or Bangladesh or something like that. That's fine. It's just not something that I need. I have nothing to do with this person. He's trying to sell me his services. Um, I see his English is not his first language. I'm waiting 
for your good response. So I'm just going to ignore it, but I'm not actually going to hit the ignore button because a lot of these times these people are sending these bot messages, like I said. So if you just ignore it, they'll resend you the same message tomorrow or the next day. So I just leave it there. And I have, you know, 423 people just waiting, you know, to be connected to me, but that's fine with me. I don't, I don't really care. Here's another one. Jason sends me a message. Now it's very easy for me to say no when someone's message right away. Is this something I'm going to deal with or something that I'm going to have some business with or not? So I see your real estate investing with the height of markets. You see, this is a, a, it's not necessarily a spam message, but it is not a personal message. Okay. A non-personal message. I'm just not going to respond to because I know he's probably sending this out, just copy paste to as many people as possible. Okay. If it's someone that he actually sees what I'm doing, now, this looks actually a little bit interesting, a little bit intriguing to me. And I may look into it before I, I reach out to the guy. But what I'm not interested in is just some you know, bots sending me messages because that's not why I'm on LinkedIn. Okay, I'm not here to, 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 I'm here to connect with real people. I'm here to interact with real people. And, uh, and this is something that I'm not doing. So again, that's a really easy way for me to connect with people. Again, here's another one. Hi, want more investors for your real estate projects? Again, it's just a, a spam message. LinkedIn market without running ads. I'm not interested in doing business with people. And again, I haven't gone through all these today. I'll probably go through them. I don't go through it every day, but I'll, I'll get back to these. These are just showing you how, how I interact with people. And again, I have 19,000 connections. So I'm definitely connecting to a ton of people. I've been doing this for years, but I want to make sure that I'm just not going to be getting, filling up my inbox with, with messages and, and spam messages that are just going to waste my time. Uh, so I'm just proactively kind of weeding out those people. But most others, if there's someone in the real estate or there's someone that looks like just a normal person, I'm going to connect with them because there's a reason why they reached out. And the first thing that I'll do when they send me that connection request and I do connect with them, guess what? I'm going to send them a message. Now you're thinking, wow, you're sending 19,000 people messages? Yes, I, I actually am. I'm not, not every single person, but probably at least 67% of those people, um, I will just shoot a quick message like, thanks for connecting. You know, maybe how did you find me or why did you decide to connect or how can I help you? Or whatever it is, just a quick brief message. That's all. It doesn't take a lot. It takes maybe 10 seconds or so. So do that every day and you will create a conversation. And that's the real purpose of this, right? We are connecting with people to create new relationships, new connections with people. How do you do that just by connecting? You will know, but actually starting that conversation. And so I don't think it's weird or, or anything like that if you have a, you know, send people the direct messages. Um, what are you doing? But again, take the time because if someone sends me a message and says, hi, I'd love to connect, tell me what you do. Now to me, I, I mean, it's pretty obvious if you look at my LinkedIn profile, what I do, right? So take 30 seconds and look what it is I do. Like if the question is, hey, thanks for connecting. What do you do? I'm like, hello, what? Take, take a second and look at my profile, my friend, like, like seriously. Um, so that, that rubs me the wrong way a little bit because what's the whole point of this, right? Build a profile, have it explaining to you what I do. I mean, it doesn't take a lot. And I've been a guest on you know, over 300 podcasts. It doesn't take a lot. You can find it on my profile. You can see a lot of those and you can like, oh, what is cost segregation? Here, you want to know? It says right here, what's cost segregation? You know, like just go and, go and read it. Anyways, um, that's the second thing, expanding your network. The best way to expand your network is really the fourth thing I wanted to talk about, but I'm going to kind of segue into that right now, which is in the engagement on the platform. Okay. So it's not enough just to have a profile. It's not enough just to get new connections, but what's really important is number one, posting original content. Uh, but even more important than that is what's called engaging on the platform. And that's actually the best way to create new connections also, because if you go to your, your home feed, just go to your home feed. Interesting thing, let's go to the home feed and I'll tell you how this works and how I do. I see we have some questions here in the chat. Let's, let's bring that up. Uh, so why for following? Uh, okay, that was a private message. You send a message to people connect, but don't connect um, nor send a message. Uh, so that's the thing. Following is, is, is harder. It's a great question to call. You have the option to be in what's called creator mode. And so people will follow you as a default as opposed to connecting. The main reason why I don't have that, follow, that creator mode on is because I don't know who's going to follow me. And if they do follow me, like you can't really message people back and forth. And I think a great uh, a, you know, thing about this platform is the ability to have those interactions and have those connections. And uh, so, yeah, I have more followers than I do have connections because that's because I turned on the creator mode many times. But if you go, right, who's this person, Daniel Space, 
right? The default thing here is follow, right? But what it should be, in my opinion, is connect. Uh, and, and for a lot of times, if you find that over here, let's see, I official, we're already connected or connected with this person. So you can message someone immediately. Um, but let's just go to the, let's go back up here. And the, the, that's a great question. So yeah, I, personally, that's what I prefer doing is just having the connection uh, default on as opposed to follow default on. Um, yeah, so at your home feed, if you go to your home feed, you'll click the home button and you'll see, um, you'll see posts in your feed. What's interesting is that what you, what, what LinkedIn is showing you is not necessarily posts from your first connection. See, this is a post from my second connection. And the only reason why I have this is because a company that I follow uh, commented on this post, okay? And so too over here, this is promoted. You're gonna see that a lot. Um, you're gonna see promoted stuff. Another post, Chaya, again, first connection. This Humi first connection celebrates this. So someone engaged or commented on this. Third post over here, this is a first connection. See that? I am seeing posts for my first connections, okay? Seeing another post for my first connection. Keep scrolling. One of my first connections commented on this. Okay, so what you're seeing, and you kind of get used to this and seeing different, and this allows you to open up your 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 uh, your network because let's go back to the top, right? Go back to the home feed. Again, this chat first connection, and if I see someone, uh, another first connection here. Okay, a lot of first connections here, but it's a bad example. <laughs> But if I see one of my first kind of conflict on someone that's, that's not a first connection, what I'll do is I'll, I'll see their feed. Um, okay, let's let's see. Oh, Jerome over here. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll just like that for Jerome. Um, okay, bad example over here. Too many first connections posts. Okay, I think what I'll show you now is, is something else. Go to your home feed. And again, you click it, it'll refresh. And you'll see something that you like. The reason why LinkedIn is going to show you the, the posts that you see, it has to do with the algorithm. And the algorithm is showing you things for a couple of reasons. Number one, because number one, they're for your first connections, but they're people that you actually engage with. So if you have messages with, or you engage with other people's posts, that's what LinkedIn is going to show you. So you'll actually see more and more of the same people because you are likely to, to comment on their things. So um, here again, it's promoted. I'm actually speaking at this, if anyone wants to see the storage investor nation virtual event, uh, it's happening. You can use promo code Yona to get on the off your ticket. Okay, so let's let's take this example. Let's go to Jason Appel's post, okay? Who has multi-tenant medical offices for sale? And if I have something, I'll, I'll comment there. If I don't, very easy thing to do. Yeah, I will come and say, uh, I will tag someone, right? If I know, that has medical offices for sale. Like if I know a broker that has that, I'll tag them. Or if I know someone that, that is in that space, I will tag them. That's a very easy thing to do. Um, another thing, like the post, that's fine. Or I'll just say, um, I'll write something like commenting to help spread to my... That's a really common thing people do. It's very helpful because again, now because I did that, this is going to show up in the feeds of many of my other connections. And so if someone sees that, uh, who will, that, that's a really easy connection. It's a really easy way to help people. And so that's the main reason why I'm on the platform here, again, is, is to help people. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I want to do go back to the, the point of engaging with other people's posts. Um, here, check this out. If you go to my profile, and this is a great tip for you guys, go back to my profile, check out, I have an article uh, over here. Let's go to my activity. Go click on show all activity. Okay, and click on articles. And I wrote an article. This is something we're gonna talk about in a minute. This is the CRE LinkedIn challenge. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So I'm gonna do a few times a year. And we're gonna start another one in a few weeks from now. So I'd love to get everyone on this call involved in that. Um, but this thing here, this is called the 18 cents challenge. How to maximize your reach by adding massive value to others. I wrote this a few years ago, but it's so, so, so relevant uh, even to now. So I guarantee, I highly recommend everyone go spend 10 minutes, read this article. It will totally change the way that you use LinkedIn, okay? Um, and so this is really what it's all about. It's about adding value. It's based on the strategy by Gary Vaynerchuk to 
have a dollar eighty, meaning add your two cents to ninety different posts a day. Dollar eighty. I said eighteen cents. Just add your two cents. Add your thoughts to nine different posts a day. So the point of this all is is find go through your home feed. Or there's two other ways to do this also, whether it's just going through your home feed or, uh, and you can toggle this from top to recent. And I know a lot of people use it on the app, so it's a little bit different on the app, but it's hard, hard to show over here. Um, but you can go and see what things, the other way you can do it is you can search hashtags. Let's say you want to search multifamily. Okay. So you click on posts and let's say you're going to click on multifamily. Um, you can sort by latest and you'll see who has posted about multifamily. So here's a company. I don't really like to engage with companies posts as much because uh, I'd like to interact with people. Um, it's interesting. A lot of these are from companies. So bad example here. Here you go. Here's a guy, Riley Ald Mixon. I'm not connected with this guy. Okay. looks like he does construction, but he says five years since I started working at Streetlights, I started as an intern knowing nothing of multifamily construction. Okay. But here it's great guys talking about his life. 10 minutes ago, he posted this and you know, five years later, he's, you know, doing well on this construction site. So here's a great way to connect with a new person in the space. So what I would do is just make a comment over here. Um, read the post obviously, and maybe a thoughtful comment. You know, I love your story. Congratulations. Uh, you know, I'd love to connect or something like that, whatever it is, uh, you know, tell me more about your story, whatever it is. Okay. Again, it's just an easier way to connect with people. Again, 10 minutes ago, so early posts, getting the first comment in on a post is actually a great thing. Cause that, again, going back to the thing we talked about right at the beginning is that your tagline will show up there. Now, if you have the first comment, then everyone that sees that post is going to see your first comment by a lot more people. Okay. Um, so here, another thing, this is a broker. He sold this apartment building to make a little comment there, right? Congratulations, looks like a great deal. There's someone here, check this out. Uh, who was it? Was it Ray? Right, you know this guy, Ray? He's in Tempe, Arizona. Is Ray still here? I don't, I, I don't know him, but I should. You should, he's a broker. And he just sold this, which a 16 unit deal in Tempe. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Check this out. Let's do Ray Hightower. Are we connected, Ray? No, we're not connected yet. So either way, that's I'm me. Gonna, that's I'm going to tag you. Hey, yeah. do, do you. Is it okay if I tag you here? Yes, yes. Check this out. See that? Now you're going to check that out. He's going to check you out. And who knows? He may have another deal and you may be able to get on that, right? So that's a great way, again, to connect people. It's a great way to uh, to connect with new, new people. Uh, there's so many ways to do this. Again, this is one of my favorite things to do is just take a, you know, multifamily or, or any, any word whatsoever you can search and use this search bar. Uh, you know, you can even do it more like use the Boolean approach. Like check this out, multifamily um, and right? Quotations, uh, closing, right, closing. Uh, I'm a little tired. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to write multifamily closing. It's going to be the same thing over here. Same things we saw before, but, uh, we're so happily in our amazing seller, right? Here, another broker in New York. So if I was in New York, uh, and I'm looking for, you know, a broker, I, I, I would engage with this stuff, right? Okay. Luke from Real Estate Group. Okay. Another one. Most of these are going to be from brokers. So there's a lot of self-promotion out there, but I don't want to focus on this too much. I want to actually turn over to the, to the next thing, which is going to be about closing. Whenever you put closing in there, you're going to find a lot of brokers. Okay. So it's a great way to connect with brokers, find brokers and interact with their posts. Because again, you see here, there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of engagement here. Three likes, one comment. If you get on there, guess what? You're going to be noticed. Thank you. It's always a pleasure working with Paul and the OCT team. You guys made it easy for us. So check this out. Here's a great tool. Look at this. Uh, for me, someone, I'm a, uh, a service provider. I, I do something called cost segregation. So I'm looking for people who are apartment owners. I'm not necessarily looking for the brokers per se to interact with, but check this out. This guy, Old Capital, I'm connected with Ricardo, right? I know a lot of the guys at the Old Capital and, and women, and they just sold this, this property, 
Um, and Kevin Chalmers and Lori Chalmers, they're apparently the buyers, right? How do I know that? Because down below, Kevin comments, thank you. It's a pleasure working with you, Paul, and the OC team. You guys make it easy for us. Looking forward to the next one. So Kevin apparently and his wife just closed on this. So they were the buyers. That's my assumption, okay? <laughs> Either the buyers or the sellers, one or the other. Um, he says here, uh, congratulations, Kevin Laurie and entire legacy Ari on their latest acquisition. Okay, so I know that these guys, so if I want to connect with someone, this guy just bought a 248 unit apartment building. I'm going to connect with this guy. The way I'm going to do it on the, on the the is probably not to hit this connect button. Why? Because I want to add a little note. And you can't do that unless you actually go to that person's profile. So if you go to the person's profile, so I'll add a little emoji over here and I can connect with this person, go to their profile and see, actually, I think we're already working with the legacy REI. So I'm not going to to do that, but I'll add a little note and I'll be like this, add a note. Hey, Kevin, congrats on the deal you just closed. And you see that this is very different from just getting a spam message or a very uh, general, general uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Generic message. Here, it's very, um, very personalized. Right, it's their, not only their name, but it's also their post. Sorry, my battery's my laptop. It's going now. Yeah. There we go. Um, just closed. Um, maybe more. I'd love to connect. That's it. And send that connection request. That's it. It's very simple. Guarantee you, it's much more likely he's going to connect with me. Right, because of that. Now again, that's all about engaging. So many, so many, so many ways to do this. A couple questions here in the chat. He was linked to our here in the window. I can go back to that or you can go by profile. Uh, let's see. Back to the Nona Weiss castigation. Um, the last thing I want to focus on, and I think is probably one of the most important, is the, um, the feature of posting the original content. Okay. Now, this again may seem very overwhelming. Here, copy link to article. Let's go back to the chat over here. If anyone wants to check out that article, you can check it out there. Okay, um, posting original content. Now, as you guys may know, I post a lot. Okay, if you guys uh, have have seen my activity at all, some days more, some days less, but I'll post at least every single day. And it's something I've been doing consistently for, like, like I said, about four years now. I know there's a lot of things to do. I also have a podcast, so I'm posting a lot of that. I'm posting, uh, you know, Every time I have a, here I posted about this tonight, this meetup, a lot of people found this over here. Uh, I do some live sometimes, but what I wanna show you, I do the episodes of the podcast that come out, um, but sometimes it's just, you know, posting. So there's a few different things you could do. When you wanna post, you can just go to the top of your feed over here, click start a post, and you can write anything you want, right? You can add a photo, you can add a video, you can add a document, uh, there's a PDF or something. There are a lot of different things. You can create a poll, a uh, little, little different things you can do. Photos are great. Videos are great. Uh, I find that actually just plain text works the best. So these are something that I can do. But now you're going to come and ask, a lot of people will ask, well, what should I be posting about, right? And do you have to be super creative to post things? And my answer is always post about what you're doing. Okay, post about your journey, post about things that you're involved with. So it's really more than anything. And I said I was going to come back to this. I do a 10 day challenge every few months. And this 10 day challenge is really geared to people in the commercial real estate industry to try to encourage people to just post consistently for 10 days straight. Because once you start it, it becomes a habit. And when it's a habit, you can continue doing it. And the value that you get out of posting consistently by building those connections, building those um, and building uh, connections, building a community really is invaluable. I mean, like I said, told Lawrence earlier, you know, my business is not just 10 X, like a thousand X just from LinkedIn. I would say, you know, 90% of our business comes from, from LinkedIn. And that's an incredible factor when, when you think about it, but it doesn't happen overnight. It happens with consistency over time. Um, but so I highly encourage if anyone wants to join that 10 day challenge, it's free and there, you know, nothing behind it. I'm not selling any courses or anything like that. Like some other people do all out there is just to get people together to 
uh, encourage you and to have accountability groups of people that also are doing that. Uh, but the consistency is the main thing. So what should you post about? Main thing, like I said, is share about what you're doing. So if something happened to you, uh, if you had a, a phone call, you had a meeting, you had a meetup, check this out. Really easy for you guys is, you know, if you want to think about something to post, you can literally just post that you attended Lawrence's meetup and you learned, you know, five things from about LinkedIn from Yona. Like that's an easy post you can do. Anyone can do that. All of you can do that, literally. And, and so that will actually, the more you do it, the more it just becomes natural, becomes easier. Uh, to think of things. Now, you don't necessarily have to be posting like educational thing, but if you know something, share something. Um, like I have a podcast, right? If you've been a guest on a podcast, you can share about that. If you um, you know are looking to be a guest on a podcast, you can share about that. If you had a meeting, if you had, uh, like I said, a customer experience, you know, experience, <coughs> excuse me, whatever it is, if you had a sale, if you had uh, whatever it is, share the journey because people want to hear that. People want to get to know you, not just what you do. And so there's a combination of how to do that, not just sharing what you do, but also how you do it. Now, people talk to me all the time and tell me, well, I love all the content that you put out about cost segregation. The truth of the matter is, I am you know, the cost segregation expert. I've been you know, interviewed on 300 podcasts, et cetera, and share a ton of information about the subject. However, related to the posts that I actually do, it's very, very few and far between. In fact, let's go back. And LinkedIn, by the way, is very buggy. And so there's a lot of bugs, even though it's a multi-billion dollar platform, there's a lot of bugs. Um, so here, just look at my posts, recent posts, and you can see how much of it is actually about cost segregation, right? One post today, not at all. Uh, this post, just giving away audio books, no. This one was also about my podcast, no. Um, Again, the audiobook thing, self promo Sunday. This is something I do every week. You guys should check that out every Sunday. You can comment in the links uh, in the in the comments about anything you want to promote. That's something I like to do. Again, here this is just about a conference that I'm going to be a part of. So again, not specifically about consultation. Uh, here, this is another thing. Someone commented me on Instagram. Some guy, like a big Instagram influencer, gave me a shout out in the comments here. That is somewhat a little bit about consultation. But again, you see. Uh, another thing from the podcast, the podcast, um, again, this is about a mentoring, everything like that. Again, what you see over here, the point is, is that very, very few of my posts, maybe 10% or less, are actually about what I do. And the point I'm trying to make here is that you don't have to talk all day about what you do. You can share things that are interesting, share what your journey, share what's going on with your business, with your life. Lawrence, if you're looking at a property in North Carolina, just do a post. Hey, I just spoke with a broker looking at a property. What are some questions you know, that I should ask them? Anyone familiar with this market, <laughs> et cetera? These are things that you can ask questions. People will comment and engage with your post. Um, two years ago, your 10-day challenge was my first foray into social media posting for real estate. It was overwhelming, but I've been doing it ever since. LOL, Nicole, I am so pleased to hear that. Thank you so much for sharing. So Nicole is a, you know, a perfect, uh, you know, poster child for the 10 day LinkedIn challenge, right? You check out her content. She's crushing it. She just started a podcast also. It comes just from 10 days, just consistency, just starting and doing it. And so that's really all I have. I want to open up to questions because my throat is, uh, is starting to hurt a little more now. And uh, I think we've covered a lot. Well, thank you, Yona. Appreciate that. I got a question, right? Would you post? Do you, when you say you post multiple times, is posting multiple times a day uh, is that good or bad? It, you know, there's a lot of difference, differences of opinions out there. I happen to think it's good. Um, if you're adding value, I mean, that should be the cornerstone of everything you do, right? So if you're adding value, you can post one time, you can post 10 times. Uh, the more you're out there, the more people are going to see it. Now, there are certain times of the day that may be better than others. And the more you post, perhaps the less your posts are going to be seen because uh, individually, because, you know, the algorithm is just kind of showing your posts to a certain number of people. But the truth of the matter is, I've seen, I've seen, you know, work in both directions. You know, some days I'll post one, one time, some days I'll post five times and, you know, some there, sometimes there misses. 
sometimes uh, they all work out. So uh, I would just go with, don't, don't overthink it, you know, go with what, uh, go with what works for you. Yona, thanks for the presentation, man. Great. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, I read somewhere that if your post includes a link to an external resource, it will be pushed down by the algorithm. Can you comment on that? How, how we can optimize for the algorithm when we post? Yeah, there, there's actually a great guy. Um, I wanna put his comment, his name here in the chat, his LinkedIn profile. He is a LinkedIn scientist, basically, <laughs> okay? And he has done tons of experiments on all these different things. Um, and has a lot of blog posts, a lot of, uh, a lot of articles, a lot of things on, on, on this. And so I want to you know, open it up so everyone can go and follow him on LinkedIn. His name is John Aspirin. He's a, he's a British guy living in the UK. Uh, but to answer your question shortly, he's touched on this. I've experimented with this myself. It used to be the case that if you put links in the posts, that the algorithm totally ignored it. If you link to an outside source, it would get no exposure whatsoever. It was literally like you could see it happening. Um, and I tested this over and over again, and it was for sure that case. About a year ago, they apparently changed that and made it not the case. And I, I've experimented with it and tested that as well. I still see it. It, <clears throat> it downplays it a little bit, um, but much, much less so than it used to. So how to get around that? If you need to link to uh, an outside source, number one, don't just put the link there. I mean, if it is included in some sort of a, you know, a post that has a lot in there and it's not just a link, that's one thing. If you're just posting a link and that's it, that's not going to get a lot of eyes on it. Okay. Cause LinkedIn wants to, to see real, real posts. Uh, but even so a lot of people like to put the link in the comments and things like that. There's uh, some ways to get around it that way. <clears throat> Anyone else has a question? I, I can share that um, I am in a women's commercial real estate group, and we all buy multifamily, we syndicate, we do things like that. And uh, so one of them was in one of these programs they had paid a lot of money for to become a, a platform, you know, to build a platform and to become a thought leader and, 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 and a presence and was really struggling. Her, her, her ask that week was, she's really struggling with creating content. And I said, you know, I listened to this Weiss advice and he said, you don't need to create anything. You just say something thoughtful about somebody else's post and ride that wave. And they were all amazed. And so now they're all doing that too. So your, your instructions are carrying over. It's worth losing your voice over. <laughs> I appreciate that, Mario. That's great to hear. I have one more question, you know, <clears throat> right? You know, people talk about, you know, being, you're talking about providing value, right? And you're talking about thoughtful content. So do you, let's say for instance, if you, if you just do like a little emoji, is that something like sometimes, sometimes, you know, you just, you have nothing to say, right? It's good vibes. Huh? You're sending good vibes, it's adding value, no? Okay. Oh, so I got that's good vibes. It's true. Yeah. Okay. So that's really that's good vibes adding value. Okay. Thank you. Haynes. Is it Haynes? Hannes. Yeah. Hannes. I'm sorry, Hannes. Thank you, Hannes. Yes. All right. You're welcome. Wow. See that? Thank you. So answer questions answered. Still sending good vibes. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? I think it's all about the intention, you no? Know? Like uh, when you when you want to post something. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't, uh, and I guess Gary Vee again, you know, it's, it's you give, 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 and then you intentionally ask, and you don't try to disguise the giving as an ask, you know, just genuinely give. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to ask, they will appreciate that you ask. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Well, and that was one thing that I had picked up and listening, I, I, when I listened to the whole podcast that you had done, Yona, was, uh, it's got to be a thoughtful comment and, and germane to what the person's conveying. And because of that, because I took that extra thought process and coming out with that comment, I got a lot more requests. I mean, mm -hmm. my, my LinkedIn kind of blew up from that. And I kind of doubled my connections just in those couple of weeks when I was focusing on that. 
Yeah, hundred percent. It, it, it's so true. And you know, I talked about earlier about the connection requests coming in. And if you are actively engaged, they'll come in much more frequently than if you're not. And one thing that I notice a lot is when I have like a great post or a great comment with someone else, you can see where those requests are coming. Not everyone puts a little note there. I try to put a little note there if I can, just so it's more contextual. But a lot of times you can go back to that person's post uh, and you can look and see, you know, click the, the like button and see who liked this post or, or who commented. Mm. And you can see that's where they're coming from, right? And you can kind of play it back to that. So there's a little more legwork there. Um, but on that point also, a really great way to connect with new people is if you ever have someone that likes or comments on your post and and they're not connected with you, go and send them a connection request and, you know, start the conversation. Obviously, they like what you're doing. Um you know, there's probably a reason, reason why they do that. So I got another, another question, right? So now the comment section, right? When somebody, when you make a post and somebody comments on your, on your post, how effective is it that you comment back on the, on the, on the post of you? How important is it? Very important. Extremely important. I would say you should be making sure that you are responding to every single comment, engaging with and responding to every single comment. Does that mean when you say we engage, does that mean like, can it be, does it have to be the same at the same time? Or should it be at the end of the day? What, what, how does that work? No, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, at the same time, but it's, you know, if you can, you know, you don't have to be spending your whole day on LinkedIn to make sure to respond to every comment in time, real time. But it just means that if someone writes something, uh, they're making an effort to, to put something there. When you show that you are, you know, commenting and responding to them, thanking them or whatever it is, or asking a question, <clears throat> number one, you're keeping the conversation going. So you're showing, you know, hey, this is what you're doing. I appreciate that. And it actually, every single action that happens on your post, the algorithm triggers that to show it to more people. So it's actually helping you, not just by creating that more community, but it's helping you that by making sure your post is being seen by more people. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, so Yona, I wanna say thank you again for coming tonight. 